Hey guys, uh, so I figured we'd just jump right into it. Um, I got Fusion 360 pulled up here, and this, these two are bottom pieces here are uh, my cabinets um, to where the robot's mounted and where the 3D printer sits. So they're just loosely designed here. And then same with the 3D printer, I just kind of did the shell, and then I did... Uh, measure pretty precisely this little cutout in here. This is where the glass window sits. Um, so my whole point with how the shape of the bracket came about uh, was because my two shelves are at different heights and there was already a slight gap between them. So it gave me the idea to do this. And then a big thing, the printer now is moved flush to the back, which in the CAD it's not here, but in real life it is. Um, and it's so that the robot has no way of ever running into the 3D printer. Uh, so with it mounted like this, um, it gives enough clearance that it can swing and never hit the 3D printer. So uh, once I had this location and the two um, cabinets designed, it was I uh, imported the solid model of the robot from uh, Dubot's website. So I could turn that off, um, and then the mounting plate here is a, a separate file. But this is what we are designing today. Uh, this is the whole the whole point of this video is to uh, go over this process. So um, because I didn't want to drill holes in the top of these counters, everything is drilled from the back. So I have these three on this uh, unit and these two on this unit our clearance holes to put a countersink uh, wood screws into here, so five of them. And then on the front side, there, let me turn off this left cabinet. Uh, so on this side, this is an all aluminum bracket. So this top one has six holes, one, two, three, four, five, six, are where the robot actually mounts to. And then these three, our counter sink uh, quarter 20 bolts that go into this plate and then this is a half inch aluminum this is a half inch aluminum and then this back plate is a quarter inch aluminum so I'm gonna machine all these machine all the counter sinks um, and then bolt this top plate to the angle bracket and then onto the back plate and then once that's all together screw it into the back of the cabinets um, and then mount the robot to it, and it should all work out uh, pretty well. So again, here's the plate, and then there's the, the mounting holes for the robot. I gave a little extra clearance on the outside. Um, I originally was going to do it flush, but I kind of didn't trust that this model was true to the radius of the uh, robot, but I'm sure it is. Um, but I kind of like how this looks. And then, just so you guys know, it's pushed in from the wall. Uh, obviously the wall will be in the back here. Um, so I move the whole robot forward and that way all the plugs that come out of here uh, won't go directly into the wall. And also I want to try and sneak the e-stop. I think it'll fit right here. I think I measured it. Um, but if I can keep the e-stop back here while I'm not programming it, uh, it'll be nice just to have it kind of out of the way. Um, and then all the cords uh, will go down behind the two cabinets uh, and I can show you once I get this installed but I go down behind the two cabinets we'll plug into the wall same place the printer is plugged into and then the other cord would come this way which will go to uh, my computer station so uh, yeah that's pretty much the layout of the bracket and uh, let's get into machining it <laughs>
Here's the completed bracket. Um, these white cells are rubber, uh, so that anywhere it contacts the actual cabinet is will touch the rubber. So it'll bolt in with these holes into the back of the two cabinets, and it'll sit like that. <laughs> Uh, there she is um, all mounted powder coated um, you can kind of see there's little white foam rubber foam cells in there uh, so it doesn't scratch up the two sides and the top uh, and then uh, yeah so right there mounted up uh, I was able to fit the e-stop in back here um, it's not mounted or anything uh, it'll live there and then while I'm programming, I can pull it over towards the, my station where I can use it. And then the power cord goes down the back, um, down here, and then the main unit is in the back corner there. And then, sorry about the trash here, but uh, the bottom cord is the robot. The top one is connected to the printer. Um, and then that's a, a Wi-Fi plug that I can turn on remotely. So they will be connected to the same plug eventually. Uh, so I'll just turn them both on and they'll both turn on. Um, yeah, oh, and the other thing, so in the cab I said I wanted to move it flush to the back to get a little more room. And uh, you could see if I just kind of move the joints here. Make this completely straight. There. So now there's no way uh, the robot, the physical robot, will hit the printer. Um, I am going to make an end effector that bolts on to here with like a coupling and it'll, it'll have probably a, well, it'll have this far of a stick out. So when this door is open, you can see, uh, the build plates here. So it's going to pick up through this hole and it'll lift the plate up and pull out. Um, and then this is about a two inch gap from where the robot ends to where the uh, the build plate is. So I'm gonna slide this back over here. It's kind of hard to tell, uh, but it's about two inches. So uh, I gotta change the programming so when a 3D print finishes, the build plate will go all the way down to the bottom and then just stop and then trigger the robot to go. And then the robot will come over. It'll go all the way to the bottom. Uh, that actuator will go in and go underneath this little hole, and then it'll lift up the build plate, 
and then pull the build plate out and then spin it around to where I'm going to have some kind of a, a rack over here that I could put one down and grab a new one. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how it is. Uh, and I mentioned briefly, but in a past video, is this is just held on with two bolts. I might try to make like a, a paddle or something and bolt it in here or attach it to the outside of here so the robot can physically use that same end effector and open this door and be able to close it once it's finished. Because um, it will have to open it all the way to about there so it can get the build plate out without hitting the window. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at so far. Um, outside of the robot, the power or the power cord, the e-stop cord, and then there'll be a trigger from inside of the robot or inside the printer that'll trigger the robot when it's finished. Um, and I'll I'll have to go over how to do that. I'm not even quite sure yet. And then the other thing coming out of the robot is the USB cord. So that goes down, and then it's just snaked comes up and it's snake behind there so it's right there so uh when it's time i could just grab it and plug it right into the usb port but uh yeah i'm excited to uh, get it going and i think the next part next video will be the end effector the paddle for that and then starting to design some of the programming uh, to get it to pull the plate out so thanks for watching guys